It's that time of year again, Pi Day is around the corner, and we're all wondering when we'll see the next Raspberry Pi. Now, looking at their schedule of releases, they've been very busy the last few years, and technology in general is just booming. Look at the graphics card shortage we have right now. AMD is saying they have a shortage. Uh, Apple Computers is making their own silicone now. Just the, the processor, you know, mini form factor. I'm seeing Ryzen powered mini form factor PCs. The, the space is getting crazy busy. But for the small, com, small single board computers, it's also getting crazy. We have the Rock Pi. We have, you know, Asus. We have the NVIDIA Nano. We have just so, we have the Odroid, uh, Latte Panda. It's, it's wild out there what you can get from $5 to $100 and more. And my question is, will we see a Raspberry Pi in 2021? I really don't think we're going to see one in on Pi Day. I think it's too soon. We just had the Pi 400 drop, I believe, November of last year. And um, I just don't see that them dropping a Pi 5 all of a sudden. But I do want to speak about what people want in the Pi 5 and what is realistic. So the Raspberry Pi 400 did just come out. And what we saw there was the Cortex A72 at 1.8 gigahertz bumping from the Raspberry Pi 4 at 1.5 gigahertz, a welcomed upgrade. Now, the price did not match, though, bumping the price up to $70. However, there was the keyboard. It was like a ZX Spectrum type throwback, and people loved it. I want to also point out this comment right here about, I have still not learned how to code with Pi 4 fully. The mission is to teach coding, not to make the best PC. So that's where I, you know, caution everyone that, um, you know, I just don't see Raspberry Pi being in that big of a rush to do this, but I do believe they're probably working on something and the people working on it are not allowed to say, but it is in production in some of that process. The matter, the fact is, when will we see it? And uh, I would not be surprised if we saw it this year. I just don't see it happening this month. Now, as far as what can actually happen. Now here, I'm gonna start with realistic upgrades. We'll probably have another Broadcom processor at about two gigahertz. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, that already exists on a single board computer. Yes, but is it running this software? Is it this form factor? And does it have the, the branding as well? A lot of people don't realize that, that Raspberry Pi is kind of like the Apple computers of single board computers. They just have a big following. A lot of people choose them. Um, so it's like the iPhone versus Android. You just have a lot more users on that back end. So I think that people will buy a two gigahertz processor, especially if they can somehow do some kind of improved uh, graphics. I think that would be really good to work on with that chipset, but we will see. So looking over at the board here, USB threes, we only have two right now. And, and then you have a USB two, yeah, two. These are gonna swap over to USB three. It's a simple upgrade to do, makes sense. But as far as the USB three that they use, a lot of people are speculating that maybe we can actually get to a five gigabyte USB three, uh, three for both, for all four ports. The micro HDMI port, one is 60 hertz and one is 30 hertz. We'll probably see a double 60 hertz one and it'd be cool if it could support even higher. The original Pi 4 was capable, this, this, this board is capable of supporting up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. I really do think people would buy that. We're already seeing people buying the Pi 400. I think people's pricing is definitely, they're willing to pay a, a little bit more. I see it all the time on my channel. People say, you know, Drew, can I get away with two gigabytes of RAM for emulation? I'm like, hell yeah, that's all you need. But people are still like, yeah, I, I think I want to buy a little more for, for you know, future proof. So it just goes to show that I feel that when people see that, oh, there's there's a more expensive one, they, they, they only look at the price and they see like, oh, I want that one. And so I do think offering that higher RAM, uh, people are going to buy it. Speaking of higher RAM and better processor speed, you might be wondering, well, Drew, why are they, why would you think they'd be in such a hurry to produce something a little faster. And a lot of it to me comes with video playback. Right now, the Raspberry Pi 
four really even struggles with like a 720p on on a regular and a regular uh youtube stream 1080p you know it really starts to show that it's it's maxing out so if we can get it to run 1080 natively totally all good with no overclocking that'd be great and if it could even go up to maybe 1440p or higher i think a lot of people would enjoy that especially people using the raspberry pi 4 for a desktop replacement. So while those are small improvements, I think a lot of people would welcome them and you would see a noticeable difference. So most people watching my channel are probably wondering about emulation. And like I said, they really need to um, improve their GPU on the board. And I think a lot of people would be very welcome to that. It would improve the video playback. It would improve the emulation um, and you would sell a ton of units. So that's my would love to have. I just don't see that being a priority of theirs, especially when you have other people on the market like Latte Panda and Odroid who make that a priority for them. Something I haven't spoke about yet is the actual storage. You know, we finally have hard drive support on the Raspberry Pi 4. A lot of people are wondering whether they're going to put, you know, onboard storage on it. We have a PCIe connection available that would also be a welcome upgrade as it would you know unlock a lot of potential as far as where, where you stored everything uh, but with the usb 3.0 you can absolutely run this on a usb hard drive and if you can get those rates you know those data rates up to five gigabytes or more people are going to go nuts on that as far as removing anything off of the board i just don't see them removing anything because it is a tinkering board first I also want to bring up why we might may or may not see these changes and a lot of it has to do with heat, longevity, and price. They're going to be looking at all these factors and, and you know, decisions need to be made. Same reason with your smartphones, you either get a nicer screen, higher refresh rate, uh, more RAM, the different processor choices they have, how many cameras you're going to get, right? Either you have choices, you know, processor, you have the, the USB, like everything on the board costs money and everything on the board is producing some kind of heat. So those are the decisions that they're going to have to make with the Pi 5. The jump from the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus to the Raspberry Pi 4 was crazy. People, especially once we had emulation set up for the new software, it went crazy. Cases, you name it, a ton of aftermarket parts and it was a success in my mind. So I don't see, and then when the Pi 400 came out even, I saw so many people excited about that. So there's no doubt in my mind making Raspberry Pi 5 is going to lead to many sales and a lot of people adopting the better, uh, more improved performance. Now, when we'll see it is still the question. My, my guess would be November of this year, but who knows with the shortages going on and supply chains and the uncertainty of the pandemic, who knows? Um, but I welcome it. I'm definitely gonna get one if they, if they sell one and I pass the question on to you. What would you like to see? When do you think it's going to come out? Um, Cause the more people that, you know, they see interest, the more likely they are to produce such a product. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.